Well, to be honest, this is not entirely true. I can give you everything but love, because giving love in this costume is rather difficult. Or do you want to try to find love on the ten layers of duct tape and the ridiculous amount of makeup in my face? I am Odette Hellergrant, the tallest drag queen in Swiss show business. Not the biggest, but most elevated. And yes, I'm called Hellergrant because, according to media reports, I'm simply terrific, hence the grand, and I have the charm of a chainsaw and come right out of hell. Or to make it short, I'm a big deal in Hellergrant. I am a drag queen, a man in a wig, and women's clothes. I don't, I am not a trans woman, and I have absolutely no desire to become a woman. I am a cis man who happens to be gay and likes to put on makeup, be strapped into a corset and uh, showered with glitter for artistic purposes and money, of course. <laughs> but let me tell you how much I identify with a fish. Yes, you heard me right. Have you read the Swiss children's book, The Rainbow Fish? It is about a lovely little fish which was colorful and shiny and it got bullied by all the other fish in the vast ocean just because it was different. So it went to ask for a, advice from a wise octopus and ends up sharing all its scales. Oh my, I love that dear little fish. When I was younger and obviously smaller, I realized something is wrong with me. Yeah, that's how we phrase it when we don't meet the narrow expectation of society. There were colors in me which wanted to come out. And I thought to myself, why can't I just be like the other boys? Why can't I just be normal? There were days where I thought about using the razor blades not for shaving, and days where I stood on the bridge in the middle of the winter, on the other side of the handle, and thought about jumping into the dark, cold water just to get away and be closer to that lovely little fish. Yes, you heard me right. I thought about committing suicide. Just because I couldn't f uh, meet the narrow expectation of society on sexuality. So, as you guys probably know, the suicide rate am amongst gay adolescents is statistically significantly higher than in lots of other groups. Well, I know why. But I am one of the lucky ones who did not follow through on that death sentence. Me, <laughs> yes. That's what being gay can be. Even in Switzerland, where courts cannot sentence us to death for being gay, being gay can still be a death sentence. So I consider myself just lucky to have been able, somehow been able, to not go and carry it out. Obviously. Thanks for noticing. So, as a gay adult man, I was part of the action to help keep awareness for HIV and how to protect ourselves, because we all tend to forget. And there was an event where we needed a drag queen on a low budget. So there she was. Baby Odette was born. Thanks. This, uh, or thank God this uh, TED talk is not about how bad my costume or my makeup was back then. But I did it. Like the little rainbow fish in that story, I embraced my colorfulness in the most obvious ways you can do it, and I emerged as a drag queen. Showered with glitter, of course. And I didn't want to share my scales with anybody because they were way too expensive for sharing. So I learned to dance in heels, crazily and sexily, even on a carpet. And uh, let me tell you what, this is the most fantastic exercise for your legs. I mean, have you seen those legs? <laughs> I know, I know, I'm not on a dating show. But I'm been, I've been desperate. I've been single for 10 years, 11 now. And I'm desperate. So why not use a TED talk to um, find your Prince Charming? <laughs> so, as a drag queen, I inspired the audience on stage 
I can say what I think and state the pretty hard truth that like we all have our boxes of gender and prejudices in our heads. And I get applause for that. In the queer culture, so it is believed, we drag queens are role models and champions for equal rights. Because our message is amplified by glitter and glamour, but soon forgotten when we take off our hair or wigs, or uh, when Pride Month is over. So, as a drag queen, as I told you, I inspire the audience on stage. The applause I get on stage turns into blood around my nose when I'm walking home from an exhausting bright parade, and the cheering I get turns into spin in my face and comments like faggot or freak or the constant companion on my way from the bus stop to the gig. And being a role model for equality and dignity turns into an unpleasant encounter with the police, where I was trying to report a sexual assault that just happened to me 15 minutes prior. As a drag queen, you're pleasant to be looked at on stage. But just don't show yourself in public, public transportation, dressed up and in full glam. That's also why I came here dressed in black, with an unsuspecting duffel bag filled with glitter and wigs, and I did my makeup backstage, and I will wash it off before heading home. I don't use trains or trams dressed up like I used before. Instead, I use Uber. I even saved my favorite Uber drivers in all the city I'm performing in, of whom I know that they are open for my art. And this is me, a two-meter-tall drag queen. Imagine if, if I would be 69 kilograms instead of 102. So, but you know what? Like the wise octopus in that story, psychologists say that the things you react the strongest to in others are the things you want the most. So let me rephrase that. If somebody puts a fist in my face because I am in drag, this person is jealous that he or she cannot be his or her authentic self and embrace their yin and yang. Well, okay, this idea won't help me at all when I wipe the blood off my face, but it helps to understand the underlying reasons for such behaviors. So no matter if this, this person loves me dearly or hates me so much that they want to hurt me physically, they want to embrace their own individuality. I don't mean that they want to be a drag queen. Hell no, please don't. I need to be unique and special because I need to get paid for my gigs. What I mean is they want to do what I do, embrace their own individuality and uniqueness. Maybe it is that you are a stock trader in our ever so demanding business world, but you also want to be a yoga teacher or you're fine being a flight attendant, but you also want to be a firefighter. Or maybe it is that you want to help leading the world into a new set of rules where equality, sharing, listening and love are the most important pillars. Remember the thing about me being single for 10, sorry, 11 years? Well, it turns out not only heteronormative society the society in which I am, by definition, abnormal, has its own rules about according behavior. Also the LGBTYQ plus community. The same one which is used to fight for minorities and accept others for what they are. As a gay man, I get texts on Grindr, like, damn, you're hot as fuck, so let's, you know. So we chat. We swap pictures, and uh, then they stand in my apartment and see some glitter lying around, and assume that I am not manly enough to have fun. So I started to hide my high heels, I stopped, and I pushed all my glittery clothes away, and I hide all my portraits of myself in drag, and I stopped wearing colorful outfits as a gay man, because I didn't want to be all called out, because I don't want to be called out as not a real man. But not only during dates I don't tell people that I'm doing drag. 
also in my daily job as a healthcare professional, I set up my own rules and I don't mention my hobby. Even if clients saw me on television, newspaper, magazines, or in a TED talk. Just for the fear of being judged and questioned about my competence as an expert and leader. So you can see, as a professional drag queen, I learned to play with those rules a little bit. The ones that aren't written down, but have been embedded in our culture and passed down over centuries. So you see, there is some work to do in our society. But even my fight and my journey is not over yet. But I don't settle. I keep on making my shows and I will lead by example. I like to tell to people and I like to explain to people how narrow their perception of, perception of life sometimes is. I tell them after the show that I am a man and this is not my real hair. And then you see their faces. You can literally hear their understanding of gender and gender identities crack in their head and a little window opening in their eyes saying, system overload. <laughs> and these are people paying money for a drag show and then genuinely ask me if I am a woman. So, <clears throat> even if it's just one out of 100, this human being will hopefully expand its horizon. Maybe let others be more colorful and tell them it's okay and they can be what they are or even acquire new colors. They can keep and even acquire new colors. So remember the story I mentioned about the rainbow fish in the beginning who ends up sharing all his scales because he was bullied? The moral of the story is quite simple. Just give in to bullies and give them everything you hold precious to them to be their friends. Well, just kidding, not really. It's an excellent story to teach your children the principle of sharing, but also an open invitation for them not to be themselves. To share everything that makes them special and unique with others in order not to stand out in society. But, Os but as Oscar Wilde said, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Don't share your scales of glitter and paint with anybody just to fit into a set of rules. Instead, Embrace your own individuality and your uniqueness and support others to do the same. Help others to find and polish their own scales. I mean, as scary as it might seem right now, I promise you, if you live on your full self, it will pay the bills and you will reap the rewards. And this is true in every sense not only monetarily.